Hi, I'm John Robert Sutton. I travel the globe searching for unique foods that have been shared by generation of families, cultures, and tradition. I will connect you to the stories behind well-sourced food and the people and places who make it happen. Welcome to Truth in Food, and I am in Moscow. And the reason I'm in Russia is I have just got back from visiting a laboratory, a biological laboratory in Novosibirsk that makes some amazing uh, products, products that use probiotics to solve issues other than antibiotics. And with me today, I have the honor of introducing and speaking with Lev Fomchenkov. He is the owner of Cosmic Notropic. And Lev, how are you today? Uh, I'm good, John. Thanks a lot for having me here. Oh, this is great. And why don't we just get in right into who you are and how you came to really being the pioneer of waking up America to what new tropics are? Where, where were you born? What, how did you get to where you are today? Oh, thanks, John, for asking. So, in short words, uh, I was born in Russia in the city of Yekaterinburg. It's two hours to the east by plane from Moscow. But then I uh, finished university here in Moscow, where we are right now. Uh, then I traveled to Germany. I studied there for one year. I did my business degree there. And also I traveled to the UK for my exchange semester, which also was uh, another a year of studying and now I'm back because I'm really passionate about finding different interesting Russian products, foods, uh, supplements and uh, also different uh, pharmaceuticals which can be very beneficial for people outside of Russia. And you had a pharmacy at one point here in Russia. Uh, yeah, yeah, I actually did. I ran it uh, for several months, but uh, the, my idea was to uh, find uh, and to s basically sell all these unique things to Chinese tourists who are plenty here, but it was very difficult uh, because it's a lot <laughs> harder than uh, to uh, do business with Americans or with uh, Europeans, so it's not my cup of tea. Yeah, now let's go into the the world of government funding of pharmaceuticals. The U.S. is a private sector funding of pharmaceuticals, but Russia has this tremendous history and the positive outcome of this system of the government putting money into it. John, you are just 100% or even more sure <laughs> correct here uh, so basically the whole pharmaceutical industry in the Soviet Union has been developing in a very different uh, direction compared to the US and uh, there was a lot a lot of money that was invested into this research because there are certain uh, areas uh, where government can be good for instance uh, when it comes to uh, infrastructure when it comes to uh, weapons, when it comes to uh, space uh, exploration and different other things. Uh, so uh, pharmaceuticals was just one of them and a lot of money was spent there and all these things that were discovered at that time, they cannot be patented unfortunately in the US because of the law and if they cannot be patented then uh, pharmaceutical companies cannot set the price that they want and since they cannot the price they cannot get money that are needed a lot of money is needed to get fda approval because it takes one to three billion us dollars and a lot of years and it's not certain. So that's why, this is one of the reasons why. Yeah, and it, 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 just to let people know that the United States has absolutely used a, a, a warfare. The Food and Drug Administration has used this uh, warfare of not allowing entrepreneurs and young minds and companies to come in to be able to develop drugs, also to import food under the guise that, oh, this is going to be bad and kill you. But they allow a company like Purdue Pharmaceutical to um, weaponize drugs that have killed 
hundreds of thousands of people when it comes to opioids. So there's a real, real thing that really needs to go on within the FDA that I hope this show actually has people in Congress go in and investigate the corruption that is going on with the FDA and and not allowing drugs to really help people in such the way that drugs that you have here in Russia that's absolutely helping people that have been developed by the government and have been shut out from coming into the United States. Let's talk about some of these revolutionary drugs that have worked in Russia. And, and let's first start off on what is a nootropic? Uh, so a nootropic uh, or nootropic, it's a Greek word actually, uh, are drugs that are developed uh, for cognitive functions. So they improve uh, thinking, they improve memory, they improve uh, uh, cognitive processes in the brain and uh, in Russia they have been used uh, first uh, for uh, cosmonauts and for uh, people who needed to be on top of the edge but then they uh, started uh, mm, to be used by uh, common people because the government found that uh, these particular things they can cure many different uh, neurological conditions, for instance, strokes, traumatic brain injuries, uh, uh, different uh, imbalances in the brain, they can help with memory, concentration, and so on. And uh, the thing about them is that uh, most of them were actually developed in the former Soviet Union and later in Russia. And they are very different from the ones in the US because uh, the whole system here is different. Uh, it's not about um, finding certain things that uh, will uh, work in 100% of cases but also have strong side effects. No, it's about finding uh, relatively mild but uh, good things that can be used for people without many side effects. And that's the thing. That's what uh, is particularly uh, different uh, in Russian products. Go in, g explain that a little more, you know, in terms of uh, I America, they want 100% certainty that nothing's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in Russia, they have a little bit of leeway or how? Uh, well, it, it, it's not a leeway. It's uh, uh, more about uh, type 1, type 2 error, <laughs> what they call in statistics. Uh -huh. uh, when uh, you... Uh, don't want uh, to be uh, in <laughs> incorrect uh, when claiming that something is working and uh, on the other hand you don't want to be incorrect uh, by saying that something is working so it's uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> a bit different and um, uh, the whole system here is different and it's not bad and it's, it's not good it's just different and it should be used uh, also by uh, people outside of russia this is uh, what i firmly believe and my own experience of running my store for three years just confirms it i have thousands of uh, happy american customers who agree with it and uh, like <laughs> uh, uh, this contradicts uh, what um, the FDA would say about this particular products, of course. Yeah, and so let's go in to dive into some of these products. Why don't you talk about uh, SQ, uh, SKQ-1? What is that? Uh, SKQ-1 is um, um, the most powerful antioxidant that is out there. But uh, um, and it has been known for quite some time uh, that uh, uh, the plants have uh, this particular uh, compound that uh, if it were inside of the cell, it will slow down the oxidative processes and basically reverse aging to some extent. So this but is the big anti-aging. Yeah, find. yes, it is. It is really a big one. And uh, why you are probably asking is t this question is because uh, it is being um, um, under different clinical trials in the U.S. 
So yeah, it's stage two, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, still, since it is not approved and it uh, has been in this uh, approval procedures for uh, several years already, it has been approved in Russia several, mm -hmm. many years ago, actually. Uh, and in the US, it has been in approval procedures for several years. Uh, so people buy it, people use mm -hmm. it, and they are happy with it. And then go into the, there are the, many other the, things. the delivery yeah. into the cell that was the problem yes. and this solved that that problem correct yeah, yeah exactly and how how do you uh, professor skulachov the one uh, who developed this particular product found a way how this how to deliver this the most powerful antioxidant into the cell by using a certain um, structure i don't want to go deep into chemistry and physics sure. uh, but uh, uh, this was a really revolutionary mechanism of how to deliver this particular thing inside the cell and uh, by delivering the most powerful antioxidant in the cell you can indeed um, get some remarkable uh, results if you use this product and how do you use it how do you put it on your s do you is it a it's just uh, it's just a molecule it's just uh, a drug but it has different um, forms so the first one that was developed uh, are uh, eye drops eye drops why in your eye why because it was um, very useful at that time because it was th the only uh, drug that uh, can officially be used uh, uh, for treating uh, eye dry syndrome. Interesting. And uh, that's uh, that was one of the um, clinical applications of this particular thing. So but this drug can, but this particular substance can be used uh, in other cases as well. For instance, in creams, in um, mm -hmm. for skin, for anti aging. Uh, yes, the big one. Correct. Yep. And so again, you have to understand that Russia has such a history of innovation i mean remember russia was the first in space the first to walk a man in outer space the first to put a man in outer space so so much of this technology was developed for the space program here in russia uh, stamina certain things for the cosmonauts just like in the united states we used so much technology to advance this the the space stuff in the u.s so you're just seeing the benefits of this from a drug perspective on human endurance uh why don't we talk about some other ones that you have uh, yeah sure uh speaking of uh, space exploration programs indeed many of these uh things uh, were developed uh, for cosmonauts at first uh, because they increased stamina they improved um, abilities under heavy loads and um, there are many of them, for instance, phenylpiracetam, phenotropil. This is how it is called in Russian. It's very popular, actually, in... Uh, uh, phenotropil. Yeah. And what is popular. it? It's uh, popular. It's also a nootropic. It's uh, basically um, a combined of... Um, uh, so the molecule consists of two different parts. Uh, phenyl ring, which also helps the to deliver the substance into the brain uh so it's actually pretty similar to how visomitin works so the discovery was also how to uh, not just to get inside the cell as uh, inside the cell as with visomitin but to get past the uh, blood barrier which uh, protects our brain from different compounds so the discovery at that time was that they added this phenyl ring which helps to deliver uh, the actual substance into the brain and to help um, people this way and it's used uh, for various conditions for various uh, reasons it's a mild stimulator but unlike um, the most common uh, um, uh, stimulants in the US it is very um, harmless and it's also used uh, in cases of strokes in cases of memory deficiency it's prescribed to older people and uh, yes it's a shame that it is not approved in um, other countries but there is a reason for it 
Yeah, so a lot of people use that here, and it's very effective in Russia, huh? Uh, yes, yes, it is this, uh, effective, and it's also people outside of Russia use it. If you go to Reddit, for instance, or just search, yes, there mm -hmm. are many anecdotal ref reports, anecdotal um, references about people using it. And um, it's a shame that there is not much information about it, not much official information, mm -hmm. because uh, if there were some official information, if it would be regulated in some way, then uh, it would not be just uh, people without much information showing uh, different um, stories about how they used this particular drug, but it would be more like a drug instruction or like a common um, understanding of how this particular substance works. So it would be a lot better. And uh, this is what I'm actually um, trying to do to inform people about uh, clinical applications mm -hmm. of uh, these things because uh, these things can help first and foremost people with certain conditions, not just uh, healthy individuals. Yeah, so uh, again here, this is John Sutton in Moscow with Lev Fomchenkov. He is the owner of CosmicNootropic.com. He is the one that has here in Russia pioneering the sale of some of the most revolutionary drugs on planet Earth that are not available in the United States because the FDA has blocked them coming in. The only reason they're doing it is they're scaring you thinking that these are going to kill you, but they're not. The FDA is in cahoots with the major drug companies that will not allow these revolutionary drugs to come in and heal people cheaply, but they'll sure go ahead and allow pharma pharma um, uh, Purdue pharmaceutical to sell opioids that kill thousands of people but yet they will not allow these unbelievable drugs that exist around the world especially that are being developed in Russia that are being used by millions of people here um, and very successfully so again I'm speaking with Lev from Chenkov from Cosmic Notropic, that's C O S M I C N O O T R O P I C dot com, uh, talking about this online site that allows you to be able to access these drugs and use them for your prosperity, and that is in health. So, Lev, let's keep talking about what some of these other amazing products you have. Um, another one of the best sellers that we have is Cimax. So in Russian it's Cimax, mm -hmm. but uh, in American it's Cimax. And Cimax, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, it's a really exciting product, to be honest, because it's uh, effective and at the same time it's side effect free. So it's, uh, you know what uh, proteins are? Yeah, and you know what amino acids are. Amino acids are things that proteins consist of, and uh, parts of uh, amino acids are called peptides. And this particular thing, CMAX, is a neuropeptide. So it consists of uh, uh, seven um, uh, parts, that's hence the name of it, CMAX, mm -hmm. and uh, it uh, can help with uh, very different cognitive uh, issues, for instance, with uh, low concentration, with uh, uh, some memory problems. Uh, it is officially um, prescribed for people who have strokes and traumatic brain injuries. It is even kept in ambulances in mm -hmm. Russia. So when, for instance, ambulance comes to an older person who has a stroke, the first uh, thing that they do is CMAX actually, because it has been proven to reduce the effects of uh, strokes. Wow. Yes, so it is like not bullshit, it's a sure. real thing. Wow. <laughs> and there are lots of research on ncbi.com and so on, and it's really, really, really a shame mm -hmm. that uh, uh, it's not known for people outside of uh, um, 
Russia. And that's called CMAX. See, this is the thing that just irritates me and why I have this show called The Truth in Food and The Truth in a Lot of Things. I mean, food being what you put into your body. And again, the only thing you can control with your two hands is what you put in your body. Everything else is totally beyond your control. So it's up to you to listen to this show, find these things, purchase them and put them into your body and liberate yourself from so much of this bullshit that goes on in in advertisement in the media and again this is a drug here in russia called c-max that's very popular the ambulances use it to help you out and, and improve your memory and this can be purchased on your website correct mm, yes yes i strive to make these products available to people in other countries yes so i mean what and anyone can go to a pharmacy here in Russia and purchase this. Yes, correct. And and, and old people can do this. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, let's let's talk about the uh, the healthcare system in Russia. Just basically with allowing individual access to drugs. What's that like? Uh, it's also kind of different from what is in the US, though I'm not an expert in the healthcare systems. Um, what I wanted to say is that the drug approval procedures are very different. And I mean um, that um, it's good when, <laughs> yeah, it's good when uh, there is some um, good governance in place, uh, meaning that um, certain industries, for instance, pharmaceuticals are controlled to some extent by the government, because this way you can keep the prices low. For instance, in Russia, there is a list of essential and vital medicines. And some of uh, products that I sell, they are on this particular list. And the government uh, controls the prices, so it says uh, what um, uh, the price of these things should be because they are vital for people uh -huh. and uh, most of them are actually produced in Russia <laughs> and um, um, despite the inflation in Russia which is higher than in the US the prices for drugs uh, have for these particular drugs on the list of vital and essential medicines have been decreasing by about 1% annually so yeah, so it is very idea, different let's, from... Let's, let's talk about costs. Like, give an idea of a vital drug and the cost here in Russia for that. Um, again, I'm not a big expert in uh, the costs of producing drugs, but I can um, guess, like anybody else, that uh, synthesizing a certain particular drug uh, costs... Uh, <laughs> almost nothing. Uh, the main costs are about development, are, are about advertising, are about government approval procedures and just margin of the producers. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, how it is. So some drugs are very, very cheap and uh, compared to the US, obviously it's uh, mm -hmm. a lot cheaper. Here. Yeah, I mean, why are drugs expensive in the United States? Because the pharmaceutical company, the CEO of the pharmaceutical company has to buy his $100 million home in the Hamptons, has to make sure his $65 million G5 and G6 is flying with fuel, has to make sure his $300 million yacht is sailing correctly in the Mediterranean off of Monaco. That's why drugs are so expensive in the United States. But when you look at Russia, the government actually provides a service directly to the people so those drugs aren't expensive yeah correct so i don't uh, want to say that in many cases or in in general russia governance is better than in the yeah, US. no I, i'm not saying I this at it. all I totally i'm just understand. saying that in this particular industry uh there is indeed a lot to learn from russia because uh, it has certain unique uh, drugs and substances that have been helping people uh, for quite some time, for decades actually, and uh, it is uh, definite that uh, it, it is good, it would be useful if it were taken into the account. I agree. Now, do you, do you travel, how do you find these drugs? Do you travel around Russia? Do you speak with people? Do companies come to you? How do you find this stuff? 
uh, I just uh, was really passionate about um, neuropharmacology and about um, substances that improve memory, improve cognitive functions and all that. And they helped me when I was uh, passing my uh, uh, school leaving exams. What? Okay. What do you mean by that? You were uh, on drugs? No, no, I, I, won't, <laughs> I, I won't. These things, they are not like uh, drugs in uh, the US, <laughs> like uh, <laughs> like Ritalin, like amphetamines. No, yes. they are very uh, harmless. They are good. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are not prescription. And if you use them, you can help yourself. So, and uh, as... Mm, a person who was leaving school, I was really passionate about them and that's when i discovered uh that uh, many of them are actually um, uh, from russia and uh, later when i was abroad when i was studying in the uk i realized that uh, there is so much potential for them abroad and that people uh, buy them but they are not official they are not um synthesized on uh, government approved facilities uh -huh. they are very low quality and there is no information on how to use them Amazing. it was really a shame to learn this and i was very surprised so it's a huge huge market but it is very unregulated it is very uh, it is wild actually yeah and, it uh, it's wild because uh, indeed the fda does not approve any good information to be um, to be given to people because this would step on the territory of pharmaceuticals. Yes, and yeah. that's uh, the very reason why people cannot uh, see clinical applications and uh, like good ways to use these things. Yeah, I mean, when when you look at the cost of drugs in the United States, I know the current U.S. administration is really, really trying to keep costs down. But there's just uh, political battles raging in the U.S. And you wonder about Social Security and our aging population. And, and there's a huge shift to 60, 70 million people that's going to be on a fixed income where drug costs are soaring. And so, so much out-of-pocket fixed income for people retiring and that are elderly are going to be going to drugs this is a crisis and so much of this can be solved with collaboration with Russia and just the wound care business in the United States is a $30 billion a year business. You cannot wound care does the uh, insurance companies does not pay for the antibiotics that are being used. And one of the things why I'm here in Russia is I was just out at Russia's biological weapons laboratory uh, vector out in Kosovo, uh, picking up some products that use probiotics that are actually very, very inexpensive and beneficial to one's um, fight against bacterial and cuts and wounds. So there is uh, my mind is being blown and being enlightened and Lev here is just adding so many unique facets to what I kind of already knew, but it's amazing. What uh, and one w what is the last thing you want to say about this? Yes, John, when we just met today with each other, it was uh, very uh um interesting uh, it was really um, cool because every time john was talking about certain drug or certain uh, condition or certain problem there was always uh, uh, i could come up with some uh, russian drug that was also very effective so for instance when we are talking about uh, wound healing there is also a drug called octovigin or, or solcoceril uh, it's not only Russian, it's actually also used in Europe. For instance, uh, uh, I use it, I use uh, Solcoceril that is produced in Switzerland. Uh, and um, so basically this particular drug uh, is derived from uh, blood of, uh, west of um, calves. Uh, so, um, and... Uh, uh, it is purified calf blood and um, the active ingredient is the one that is responsible for regenerative properties of Amazing. the blood. And when you add this into cream and use this cream, 
uh, you can uh, regenerate your wounds, your scars, and uh, just tissue faster. Wow, so, and you sell that as well. Yes, yes, yeah, I so do. See, and it's ju not just cream, it's yes. also um, pills, because so it can also be used for uh, its uh, uh, adaptogen properties, mm -hmm. so improving energy, stamina, and uh, just um, after illnesses. Well, I, uh, you see, everybody, this is unbelievable. You've got to take a look at CosmicNotropic.com. Thank you, Lev, for the time today, and thank you for joining me today on Truth and Food. I'm your host, John Robert Sutton. This program is produced by Swedish Eagle and crew at Groove Radio Studios in downtown Los Angeles. For more information about this program, please visit my website at suttonselects.com or follow me on social media at Sutton Selects. You'll see plenty of great things, what Lev is doing and many others. And if you like this episode, please subscribe, rate, and review. I appreciate your feedback. See you next week.